Till now we have seen the structure of the United Nations Security Council which is the principal executive organ of the United Nations. Let us now look at the various functions exercised by the Security Council. Now the functions and the powers of the Security Council are embodied in the United Nations Charter itself from Articles 24 to 26. Can you answer this question? Which article of the United Nations Charter states the functions of the Security Council? Is it Article 24? Is it Article 25? Is it Article 26? Or is it all of the above? Which means Article 24, 25 and 26. The correct answer is all of the above articles. And the primary function of the United Nations itself is to maintain international peace and to prevent any further warfare. And since the Security Council is the principal executive organ of the United Nations, it takes up this function of maintaining international peace and security. And this it does in accordance with the principles stated in the United Nations Charter itself. The United Nations Charter guarantees the Security Council that it can resort to any means possible, primarily peaceful, to maintain international peace and security. Now, since the Security Council is the executive organ, its work is to execute and that is through formulating plans and strategies on important issues, these issues being discussed and recommended to the Security Council by the General Assembly itself. Thus, the Security Council plans and strategizes various plans of action upon the recommendations of the General Assembly. The Security Council also plays a very important role in admitting new members to the United Nations. Now, while the admission of new states to the United Nations is done by a General Assembly, this it does on the recommendation of the Security Council. Quite simply put, this function of recommending the admission of new members is more important than admitting the new members itself. As without a recommendation to the Security Council, a nation cannot even seek membership. Now let's look at an example. In the year 2011, South Sudan attained its independence and it immediately appealed to the United Nations to be admitted into the system. Now this appeal was taken up by the Security Council and when a majority of the Security Council members decided that they should give the recommendation of South Sudan as a new member, only then was the case of South Sudan heard in General Assembly and upon winning a vote in the General Assembly, South Sudan was finally admitted to the United Nations as its 193rd member. Now over here we see a picture of the Speaker of the General Assembly on the right welcoming the representative from South Sudan on the left upon joining the United Nations in 2011. Now the Security Council is a much smaller body as compared to the General Assembly and this is an advantage of the Security Council as it allows it to come to quicker decisions. This is why the UN Charter assigns the function of investigating international disputes or any threats to peace which might even involve acts of aggression to the Security Council and not only is the Security Council to investigate and analyze these disputes, it also has to recommend and then undertake appropriate methods of resolving such disputes as it is an executive organ and thus it has to act on the recommendations and whatever plans it formulates. Now these methods of resolving such disputes have to be primarily peaceful in nature or have to abide by the pacific settlement of disputes of the UN Charter where it primarily solves these disputes by methods of arbitration, negotiation, mediation by the United Nations or by referring these disputes to the International Court of Justice for judicial settlement. Now, if the peaceful methods of conflict resolution fails, then the Security Council can go to the next step where it uses various forms of pressurization to resolve these disputes but again where armed action is not resorted to. 
Such pressurization tactics are primarily economical in nature and that's why this function of the Security Council is known as the economic means of conflict resolution. Using this function, the Security Council can call on the member states of the Security Council to apply and to enforce economic sanctions which may involve complete or partial suspension of economic relations with the aggressor nations and also interruption of land, sea, air or any other means of communication. The Security Council can also call on the member states to enforce diplomatic sanctions upon which all forms of diplomatic ties with the aggressor countries are cut off. Now the intention behind these sanctions is to pressurize the aggressor nations to resolve their own disputes quickly or else be affected economically by the economic sanctions, lose out on its own allies due to the suspension of diplomatic relations or also be ostracized internationally by the various important member nations of the Security Council. Now, if the Pacific settlement of disputes and even sanctions fail, then the United Nations Security Council can use military means of conflict resolution. This starts with the Security Council calling for a ceasefire in the case of disputes. Now, a ceasefire is when both the conflicting parties have to lay down their arms. Now, how can the Security Council call for a ceasefire? This it does through international cooperation and also by stating that they would be taking military action against the aggressor if all other means are failing. Therefore, the Security Council can also employ military action where military operations on land, sea and air can be used when required if all other means fail. Over here we see troops wearing blue helmets who are sent to conflicted areas to resolve these disputes. Now, Who are these troops and on what ground does the Security Council take military action? Let's look at that now. So like mentioned, while talking about the military means of conflict resolution, another primary function of the Security Council comes up, which is the Security Council's power to deploy the United Nations peacekeeping force. These are the same soldiers who were wearing the blue helmets in the previous slide. Now the United Nations peacekeeping force is made up or is consisting of troops from all the member countries of the United Nations and they may be sent to the conflicted areas by the United Nations Security Council if a ceasefire is ordered or even if the conflict is ongoing for a very long period of time. Over here we see a few glimpses of the peacekeeping force of the United Nations in action where also they are helping the various civilians who are stuck in these conflict zones. And the United Nations Security Council is also tasked to exercise the trusteeship function of the United Nations in strategic areas. The trusteeship function of the United Nations includes helping non-self-governing territories and those territories fighting for their own independence on their path to attaining complete independence and also a functioning government. Now these territories are given the status of United Nations Trust Territories and the Security Council's function in this particular case is to execute most of the resolutions pertaining to the trusteeship function of the United Nations and to thus help the trusteeship council of the United Nations in its function. Over here we see a picture of the headquarters of the trust territory of the Pacific Islands which achieved its independence due to the trusteeship function of the United Nations. The Security Council plays a very important role in the appointment of the Secretary General of the United Nations. Now while the appointment of the Secretary General itself is done by the General Assembly, it cannot be done without the recommendation from the Security Council. Candidate which wishes to be selected as a Secretary General needs to get the recommendation of the Security Council. That is how in the year 2017, with the recommendation of the Security Council, Antonia Guterres over here got the post of the Secretary General while all the other candidates could not win. Now, upon getting the recommendation from the Security Council, there was a formality vote that was conducted in the General Assembly in which also Guterres won, 
getting him the position of the Secretary General in the year 2017. The Security Council also participates in the election of the judges of the International Court of Justice. Over here we see the members of the Security Council conducting a vote for the election of the panel of judges of the International Court of Justice. Thus, in this video, we looked at the various functions that are exercised by the Security Council of the United Nations. In the subsequent lessons, we will be looking at the various other organs of the United Nations along with their functions. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5,000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So add Delta Step. Learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.